Just when you think this Utah Jazz team is going away, they just keep coming back. Resiliency doesn't even begin to describe these Utah Jazz. All season long, this team has proven that regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, they're going to compete until that final whistle blows. And on Thursday night, we saw more of that, overcoming a double-digit deficit in the second half and some tough breaks at the end. The Jazz stayed composed and picked up arguably their most impressive win of the season, taking down first place New Orleans Pelicans 132 to 129. And it was the Jazz's second straight victory over the surging Pelicans who had won seven games in a row. What is going on everyone? Luke Rosano here back with another video. It's been a while since my last Jazz video and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to remind all of you that these Utah Jazz simply can't be denied. So we're going to be talking about them in this one. If you guys can hit a like on the video, it does help it a ton. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And if you want to see more Jazz content, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you hit that post notification bell as well so you always stay notified every time I drop a new video. Now, this was an amazing game. As just a basketball fan watching this one, this was a heavyweight battle, man. This felt like an intense playoff game. Both these teams going back and forth. We saw some exciting moments. We saw overtime. And then the Jazz, they were able to pick up this win in front of its home crowd. And this was a special night for one man in particular. And that man is Jordan Clarkson. As he set career highs and took a step forward in NBA history, he scored 17 points in the first quarter and 25 in the opening half, both career highs for scoring in a quarter and a half. He also moved into the top 100 of May three-pointers, now ranking 98th with 1,152 made. Clarkson finished with a season-high 39 points on 15 of 26 shooting and 7 for 14 from deep. He also added 8 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals in 39 minutes. And I want to just say this about Jordan Clarkson. He is quickly becoming one of my favorite players to watch. This dude is straight up underrated. When you talk about big time players in the NBA, guys who can go off in bunches, guys who can take over a game, guys who can drop 30 plus points, Jordan Clarkson never comes up in those conversations. He is one of those guys that is under the radar in terms of performing at a high level. And since he's become a starter and he's really flourished as a starter on this Jazz team, we've seen what Clarkson is capable of doing on a nightly basis. I mean, this is a guy who doesn't care what matchup is in front of him. He's going to go out there and he's going to get buckets. He can beat you in so many different ways. He can create his offense by creating his shot. He can drive in the lane and finish. He could get to the free throw line. Clarkson is a guy you want on your team as a guy who can just generate offense, especially when you need him to, and especially when your team is struggling. Clarkson is a guy who has been somebody this Jazz team can lean on, especially in these types of games. So I want to give Clarkson his flowers, man. This dude has been doing it all season so far, and I expect to see more from him. And look, the Jazz are going to need more of this from Clarkson if they do want to climb back into the top three of the Western Conference standings. And while I am praising Clarkson, I also got to show a lot of respect for Lori Markinen, who took over in the second half. His 19 points in the final 24 minutes kept the Jazz afloat as they answered every Pelican's run with one of their own. He was able to take advantage of the mismatches against New Orleans, using his height and strength to score over smaller guards or his high release and quickness to get by bigger players. Markkinen finished the night with 31 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists, shooting 8 of 15 from the floor, 5 for 9 from deep, and a perfect 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Although his stats don't fully tell the story, we also got to talk about Walker Kessler as well, who was sensational in the second half and in overtime. His defense in the paint completely stifled the Pelicans down the stretch, and they had no answer for these seven-foot big men contesting their shots and grabbing rebounds. He finished with 11 points, eight rebounds, and three blocks, shooting four of four from the floor and three for four from the free throw line. Kessler was really an unsung hero on this one, man. He was dominant for this Jazz team when they needed him to come through the most. Now, another player I want to talk about here is Mike Connolly, and he is the real leader 
for this Jazz team. Like, you talk about Conley, he's a 16-year veteran point guard, and he's by far Utah's most important player, capable of putting his stamp on a game and controlling the tempo without having to score. Trailing by five with just over three minutes to play in regulation, Conley finished with three assists and a pair of free throws to lead the Jazz. He would have had a fourth assist, if not for a foul, which added another pair of free throws. There is no undervaluing what Conley brings to this team from a mental and physical standpoint. Now, take this in as a stat, and this just shows you how important Conley is to this team and how much better the Jazz are when Conley's out there. The Jazz are 13-6 and six when Conley starts, with 11 of those wins coming against teams above 500. That is huge. Mike Conley is the important piece to this entire Jazz puzzle. When he is out there, this Jazz team becomes much more dynamite. Now, I also want to talk about this Jazz crowd, man. The Jazz have a true advantage in Salt Lake City as they improve to 11-5 and five at home. The energy has been electric all season long, and the Jazz fan base is one of the few out there that truly brings a playoff atmosphere to a regular season game. We got to get the Jazz to have more nationally televised games at home because I really want to see this home crowd get showcased, man. This Jazz crowd is simply phenomenal. And I mean, if the Jazz could somehow sneak their way up again into a top four spot in the West, and this is a team that makes the playoffs as they are obviously in contention. And all of a sudden teams got to go to Utah to play against this Jazz team in front of that crowd. Good luck. But there's still a lot of time between now and then. What I simply want to say in this one is, don't sleep on the Utah Jazz. Yeah, they're going to go through their ups and downs. They're 17 and 14. They got a tough three-game road trip coming up in which they're going to see some familiar faces. That is Jordan Clarkson going up against his old team. And they are going to be taking on the Bucks, Cavs, and Pistons. That's not going to be an easy stretch. But... This Jazz team, they're undeniable. I really think the Jazz are not going to fall off this season for as much as some Jazz fans may want this team to completely go into tank mode and just fall completely plummet in the standings for a chance to draft Victor Wabanyama, who is going to be the huge prize at next year's draft. I really think this Jazz team doesn't have it in their DNA to completely roll over. I can see this Jazz team staying around this point where they could be a disruptor. They could be a tough opponent for a top Western Conference team come playoff time. And that's the crazy part about the West. We've seen in the span of a week how close this Western Conference is. You got the Pelicans who just beat the Phoenix Suns, who were first at the time twice, to get first place in the Western Conference. And then we see the Utah Jazz, who are currently in seventh, beat the Pelicans twice. So what does that all mean? That means that the Western Conference is closer than you think. And a team like the Jazz, I mean, if they get hot at the right time, they can make some noise. So this Jazz team, I think they're going to be around for a while. I think this is a team that's not completely going to go away. The Utah Jazz, man, they are going to be a problem, whether it's in the play-in or an actual playoff spot. I do think the Jazz are going to be a part of that equation. So we'll see what happens with that. But what has your reaction been to the Utah Jazz? What do you make of these two impressive wins back to back? Hit a like on the video, guys. It does help it a ton. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new. Plus, ring the bell for more NBA and Jazz content. And that is it for me. This is Luca Rosano signing off. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all again in the next video.